Hello and welcome to News Click. The Indian government has introduced the Personal Data Protection Bill in the Lok Sabha. Now, personal data protection is an issue which has been a matter of concern worldwide, especially in the aftermath of the Cambridge Analytica issue involving Facebook. The European Union, for instance, has introduced the GDPR, which is considered to be one of the strictest laws on this issue. So what has the Indian government actually done with this law? And what are some of the possible lacunae in this? So let's talk to Prabir Burkhaist on this. Hello, Prabir. So Prabir, this law is in some level based on an earlier draft prepared by Justice B. N. Sri Krishna. So what are the major differences between uh, this version of the bill and what he had proposed? You know, before we get to that, I think there is one thing we need to register. That it seems to have been shoddy and hurried drafting that this bill represents. Right. And also the fact that it has been not, before being placed in the parliament, it has not been placed for public uh, comments, Consultation. which is normally the procedure that has been followed, right. at least for important things, unless of course we come to government's the core concerns, which at the moment seem to be only citizens' amendment bill, uh, Article 370, on all the words. Otherwise, the normal procedure has been this should be a public document. Mm -hmm. As Justice Sri Krishna had conducted a long procedure through which he had drafted the bill, mm -hmm. and this bill is supposed to be based on that. The key omissions, and I think there are key changes that have been made, right. have been to strengthen the government government's powers considerably. Mm -hmm. And Sri Krishna himself has said that how government could access data, there were strict limits on that and the strict procedures laid down how they could do it, what's called the Section 35. Right. And both in the Section 35 as originally envisaged by, by Justice Sri Krishna and what is envisaged now, uh, there are significant differences. And what it virtually says, this version of the bill, is that the government has untrammeled powers. It can do virtually anything it wants in terms of accessing people's data right. on the basis that this is a state requirement mm -hmm. and therefore it can do it. It is also things like friend relations with powers and so on. Right. Now, the important part is not whether it has the right to do it under certain circumstances, access to personal data, but the procedures laid down mm -hmm. which protect the citizens are also missing. Right. So there have been in that sense omnibus uh, powers given mm -hmm. with no safeguards virtually right. in this act or this version of the bill. Right. And I think that's a very, very significant point of departure. Mm -hmm. The second departure again, which has been put out, the Sri Krishna's version of the bill had that the data protection authority, which assumes a huge amount of uh, responsibility by virtue of the central position which has been given to it and how it has been given this powers, I'll come to that in a moment, is that the D data protection authority should have people from outside, not just the executive. Mm -hmm. In this version, again, it's entirely going to be staffed by the executive. So what it has done is it has taken legal powers, it has taken executive powers, and both these powers vest only with the government. Right. So this is, I think, the central problem with this. Mm -hmm. And not me, Justice Sri Krishna has called it that it will create an Orwellian state. Right. This is the other part of it, that it really is a surveillance bill. Mm -hmm. It's long, wrong to call it data protection bill, particularly in light of the Puttaswamy judgment of the uh, Supreme Court, where the right to privacy has been held a right. fundamental right. right. So this, in effect, violates the fundamental right that it, it really has. And it also makes that any, any violation of it will be done only under the uh, the DPA, mm -hmm. the Data Protection Authority, if an individual's violation takes place, he can't really go to court, he can only complain, he or she can only complain right. to the DPA and only they have the powers to right. do something further to that. So it even takes away the right to redressal in some sense mm -hmm. that the people have of the violation of their privacy mm -hmm. by the government and its officials. Right. So I think these are some of the points that are there. Mm -hmm. Obviously there is much more in a rather fat act right. that is there. It has seen privacy uh, person activists talking about the violations. It has also seen the business itself talking about these violations and there are also violations of procedures. Right. So one of the other key aspects is also it's interesting that you can compare it maybe to the Intermediary uh, Guidelines Act also where a similar procedure exists that the, the government has an omnibus option of clearing uh, say requests to 
like uh, conduct surveillance. So it actually reminds me of that. But could you could you also talk a bit about the data fiduciary aspect also? Well, before I go to the data, data fiduciary aspect, you know, let's also look at the difference between how that bill mm -hmm. or the intermediary act was uh, introduced and finally uh, talked about how, how it was finally executed because a lot of these things get executed by the rules right. and they did come in the business uh, of the house committee which looks at the rules and there were changes made after public hearings mm -hmm. what is i think important in this is that there is no has been no public hearing first mm -hmm. Second is, this should have gone by rights. If we've introduced the parliament to the parliamentary standing committee on IT. Right. What has happened is, the IT committee, which is headed by Shashi Tharoor, and we know that the Pegasus software, mm -hmm. the IT committee by the 10 to 10 tie and casting vote by Shashi Tharoor, decided to look into the Pegasus uh, software. Has it been actually procured by government agency? And it's inst instructive to note, after that, all committees of the parliament have met except this standing committee right. and a new standing committee only for the purpose of this bill is being done. So it seems that even the normal procedures of the parliament mm -hmm. are actually being violated mm -hmm. the way this is being steered. Right. So now you raise the issue of fiduciary. Now, you know, fiduciary just means there is an intermediate body which holds yours and my data. So this, anybody which holds yours and my data becomes quote unquote a data fiduciary. This is in some sense to say that it is not really private data that is being held by these companies, that it is not their property, but they hold this your and my data as fiduciary. So they have some responsibilities towards us. The only exemption of course of this is of the government, right. which holds the data and they hold essentially untrammeled powers to use the data as they deem fit mm -hmm. on the basis of providing service services to the people. Right. So in that sense, they could also conceivably, as holders of the data, and fiduciary just is another word for saying holders of the data, mm -hmm could also transfer this to private companies mm -hmm. and those provisions at the moment, can they say for this, I'm giving this over to Reliance Geo? This is not clear at the moment. Now the fiduciary concept had one saving grace and we must point that out here, that it also makes clear that data that is taken by companies like Google, Facebook are held by them are not to be regard, regarded as their property. Right. They hold it in trust mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it does create an issue whose data is it at right. the end of it. Now, a lot of the issues that have been raised by the business is what happens to this, what will be the procedures, what will be the data processing authority. I think the whole what is being what used to be called a license permit raj model that the government finally will hold all the powers considering the data processing authority is completely government is a government body though it should have been an independent body and the fact that lot of these rules what is going to happen are being left completely vague or opaque mm -hmm. means that the government will really be in a position to dictate to business how this data would or would not be used right. and would also have access to their data. Right. So the data fiduciary, instead of being a protection for the people, which is what uh, Sri Krishna's recommendations it appears was, it seems to be, it could be possibly turned on its head. Mm -hmm. And instead of that, the government would act essentially as an agency in the guise of data fiduciary to hand over our data to private parties. Right. And I think that is something we need to uh, see what in more details, what these provisions really are, how much they have been left open, and whether there will be uh, any changes before it becomes an act of parliament. I think this is something which need the privacy activists as well as the business interest, as well as the common people, political parties, all have taken this. Right. Because this is the other part of what's happening now, that what we would call the 
uh, not the license permit raj where we seem to be quite licentious as far as big business is concerned but really introducing a surveillance or a police raj right. what is being called as the orwellian, orwellian state. state though you know this generation of people probably never heard of george orwell so they would like to know what the hell is this right so and finally on a slightly connected note although this is not only to do with the government can this sort of a law say prevent a cambridge analytica like incident in the coming years well you know theoretically there are provisions mm -hmm. okay the questions are this provisions who implements them and how can we activate those provisions and that's where i was talking about that i as an i mean as an individual right. i don't seem to have the power to use any of these provisions to go and say this has violated my rights right. i have to go to the uh, digital uh, Authority. Authority. public authority right. which is being created by virtue of this bill or act when it becomes an if it becomes an act and they will be the only ones who can proceed so in effect the aadhar had similar provisions where the only aadhar authority could do certain things and then the supreme court held uh, the courts have held that this was violative of our fundamental rights mm -hmm. so again this provision that all powers of protection of the citizens citizens are vested only in the dpa right. and the individuals do not have the right to move courts are also present here right. so we'll have to see whether it will help a cambridge analytica mm -hmm. or it will help the people in protecting against a cambridge analytica it's quite possible mm -hmm. that a ruling party like it has used election bonds says you know if it is used by a it is okay but if anybody else uses it mm -hmm. it's not okay right. so we we could see election bond like scenario uh, emerge in which only one party would have the ability to use this data mm -hmm. and nobody else right. but i think again these are provisions in law which may not stand up so as i said in the beginning this is a shoddily drafted bill with all the bureaucraties that involve that is involved in india by which the bureaucratic apparatus wants to assume all the powers of in the individual as well of the state as well of the courts so it seems to show all three of these problems in this particular bill thank you prabir that's all we have time for today keep watching news click Thank <laughs> you.